get back with you. We just want to give that enough time to, to naturally happen. And they may come back and say, we're not interested at all. And so, or they may say, yes, we'd like to be considered. And if so, we'll bring you both those, that, that information back for both of those individuals at the next meeting for your consideration. Okay. You only have two? Right now, we only, that I'm aware, is there, there was just two folks that we were, that we knew that were I, interested. I want a couple of other things oh. clarified. Um, this is a, this is a board or a council that acts as a recommending agent to the BOCC, is that correct? The advisory, the TDC advisory board. So, so it's, is it uh, against or is it okay for me from a Sunshine perspective to have communique with individual TDC members about maybe the makeup of that and or potential items that are come to come before this board? I'm under the impression that I'm, I'm not allowed to, to visit with them from a Sunshine perspective. I can't. So there's no, there's no fear in that. A recommending board, we're good to go all the time. Because I remember when we had the insurance committee, I couldn't talk to them because they were going to make a recommendation to us. TD's, it's TDD. 13 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So They're that's going, changed? Yeah. No, I think, Carson, with others, I think the issue was that us being on the insurance board couldn't talk to each other, but we can talk to you as a commissioner. We just couldn't talk. Like, I couldn't talk to Ernie. I couldn't talk to another board member on that insurance committee. Because, no? no? I'm pretty sure that we got... We got. Okay. I'll tell you that you can talk with advisory boards. Good. About their business. Now, the only thing with one caveat on, like on, on um, quasi-judicial matters, like okay. planning and zoning, it you know where you're making a judgment about to approve or disapprove of rezoning, it's probably not appropriate for you to be talking with the LPA, who themselves are making a recommendation, and for you to be like trying to steer them a particular way because you both need to make your own judgment. That or the CLB, right? We would yeah. want to stay away from yeah, that. Although CLB never rarely comes to you. Okay. They take final action themselves. Okay. To approve or but, disapprove but, license. But everything the TDC does, the board, has, this board has to approve it. Yep. Um, let me ask one other question. At the last board meeting, um, I don't know what, I don't know what the final outcome was, but essentially we reconstructed the makeup of the TDC. <laughs> no. no. What did we take action on then? We confirmed what you meant in your ordinance when it says that you have a city manager and a city board that have different opinions of the bill. You interpreted it to mean that you need one of each and they can't, you can't have a person who's a city commissioner and also a tourist industry representative us be a second city commissioner for that city on the board you said you won't allow that you want it to be one city commissioner for three cities with no other hats counting or being considered and so we don't have to re-advertise or re we can we can take an action like that and make it make it concrete and be done yeah. your interpretation and your declaration of what you think yeah, your that's ordinance already means. done so we had to clarify our interpretation you didn't have to but you did and, and and you have and so now it's clear and the city acted accordingly based on verification at the last meeting okay all right all right sounds good i'm glad we got that cleared up then got a motion and a second um any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carries next portion is d1 yes good evening commissioners um the this agenda item is asking for permission uh for staff to hold a workshop regarding the um the transportation study that we have a grant from DEO on, um, we uh, we had it uh, had requested for a four o'clock start time. We don't think we need that much time, so we're changing it to four thirty, and we just ask that you give us permission to pursue that. I have a motion towards it. By Commissioner Iglesias, second by Commissioner Bird. Any further discussion? So is permission to hold the workshop on May 25th regarding the Air Glades Area Transportation Study? Is that right? Yes, sir. They just want to move the time from 4 to 4.30. On a Saturday, right? No, it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday? Before our BOCC meeting. So before our BOCC meeting, we're going to be here in, in LaBelle, have a 4.30 meeting about this. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. All right. 
And we are having a meeting this Saturday, a community outreach meeting on the transportation study out at John Boy, if you want to join us. Not at all. I'm going to okay. be working at Indian Town. <laughs> Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. On the agenda next is public hearings, petition number CPA 20-0008. I'd like to make a motion to approve CPA 20 0008. That's a half a block from my house. Second. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Harris, <coughs> second by Commissioner Turner. This is a public hearing. If anyone of the public would like to speak to this at this time, seeing none, any members of the board discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. B, next petition, number RZ20-0009. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve RZ20-0009. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Iglesias. This is also a hearing of the public. If anyone would like to speak to this. Seeing none. Anyone with discussion on the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Petition number CPA 20 0010. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was hoping. You're scared to come up here? Yeah. No, I was hoping you were going to make your. Earn your motion. keep. You know. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, commissioners, this agenda item is a, a transmittal hearing for uh, an amendment to the comprehensive plan uh, regarding. Uh, the infrastructure element um, to add language that would be adopting the updated uh, water supply facilities plan dated February 20th, 2021. And uh, again, this is a transmittal hearing and it'll come back for adoption. Uh, the estimated uh, date would be June 8th. Move. Motion by Commissioner Harris. I didn't catch the second. Second, you got second by Commissioner Bird. It's also here in the public. Anyone in the public like to address this? And uh, any further discussion on the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Staff reports, Mr. Parker. Commissioner Shane Parker, for the record. The first item I had for you was a placeholder for a funding agreement from DOT for Old County Road 78 sidewalks. Go ahead, Commissioner Harris. DOT uh, was <laughs> <you> can, <laughs> There's nothing to approve because I didn't receive it. So. it. That goes right by these two uh, public hearings. That was the sidewalks. <laughs> I moved to accept after how many years? <laughs> I don't have the funding agreement. <laughs> Tighten up. I need a second. He's not ready to vote on it yet. Sorry, DOT. <laughs> Sarah wants a placeholder for the agreement. Up, <laughs> it should be. It'll be at the next board meeting. I, mean, I was. I was really anticipate having it, and I won't have it. But it won't delay the project. DOT will move forward with the project. We'll just have. We'll just be in agreement for thirty thousand forthcoming. Mr. Chair, why why can't this be one of the ones that we just approve in? You know, anticipation thereof. Cut out the red tape. Let's go. I'll I don't know if there'll be a resolution with this one or not. Could be. There you always know. is, isn't there? Typically on a new agreement there is. I, I think so. I would I think they require a resolution. Way. And so in order for you to approve a resolution, you're approving the attached agreement. I mean, it's their requirement that you have a resolution. It'll be under consent next time. So what it is, it's government. I know it, it's bad, but <laughs> it's accountability. Keep going and we'll approve it later. Okay. Okay, the next item I have for you is the Wheeler Road MSBU. Now we're talking. All right. <laughs> well, we, we can't approve that. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. I sent you a, um, a staff report. You can read it at leisure. I'm not going to go into a lot of it. But Wheeler Road community is comprised of several lots that are 1.25 acres in size. They were not platted. They were developed by Lee Hiker Development Corporation. We commonly <coughs> refer to it now. Bless you. It was, I think it was called East Lehigh then. Now it's commonly referred to as Wheeler Estates. There's also some large tracks. Uh, thank you, Carl. So 
we have three different things that we're trying to accomplish out there in Wheeler Road. And one is resurfacing the existing roads. We've done Wheeler Roads, the south segment. We've done second and tenth. And we recently completed 16th Terrace to the north. And from the map. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to work on Wheeler Road from here north to Townsend to Canal Grade. Townsend Canal Grade is maintained by Henry County. We have easements for that. And we've got some easements in yellow scattered. This yellow one's yellow, and um, the red's what we were missing. So you got the monkey farm there, SoFlo Ag. They have recently said they'd be willing to work with us instead of having the road. Okay. If, road, if the road goes north, it goes by the monkey farm. They're not really keen on it. You go this way, you got red cockaded woodpeckers. And um, you go this way, you've got a house in here, and the residents not happy about it. So the monkey farm seemed receptive to going forward this way. And so we're pursuing that. And then in the Towns and Canal Grade, the Water Management District is getting ready to improve Towns and Canal Grade with some sheet piling. And what they want to do is they want to cut towns and canal grade down and lower it and explain to them that that's a spoil pile. They may find some things that they're not aware of, such as large boulders or um, some clay balls. So they're going to actually take all that out and fix the road. The sheet pile is going to be maybe a foot or two above the edge of the road. Explain to them that that's a safety hazard. There's a canal there. Um, we're asking for guardrail. They didn't say no. I'm pushing for that, saying you're building a new road. Hence, it's a safety, life safety, and while you're at it, this is peanuts, but we'd like you to pave it, too. So... I think they will pave it? I think if uh, you all lobby very hard to water management district, I think they will. C43 Reservoir, the cost of paving that road is, is nothing compared to the cost of that reservoir. And in, it would be... Any phase. Any phase. In, yes, in any <laughs> phase. But if we can get the... If they don't, and it's a rock-graded road, and we get the guardrail... That, that's, a, that's a major expense that comes off the county side. Shane, I'm not trying to sound ignorant, Mr. Chair. Uh, Black Hole Road doesn't have a guardrail. Why would we need a guardrail here? Because the actual, I didn't have to bring a cross section. Right against it. The edge, the edge of the road that we grade, there's a barbed wire fence, pepper bushes, and there's like a one-to-one -one slope down to the canal. There okay. is no room. And that's one reason the county doesn't want to pave the road, because if you pave the road, you're bringing up the standards, increase speeds, they could end up in the canal. Okay. You, you and so now they're going to... So you don't want to increase our ability to have liability No by, more than what we have right yes, now. Okay. And okay. so that would be... So if traffic's coming... Well, where north, does it stop right now, guys? I still... I, I, okay. What, what does it look like today? That's why I wanted the, that's why I wanted the yeah. map. Is, right. is what does it look like today? Currently... I, I don't need to know what the conditions of the road are. What okay. I'm saying is, is if a human that lives over there wants to come to LaBelle to go shop it. Um, they have to drive to they have to drive to Joel Boulevard in Lehigh Acres and travel north to State Road 80 right. and then head back east. Here's Show me your pointer. Show me your pointer. Oh, I don't have it. It's not that portion it. there, yeah. It's got to go further down. Map. Further down. You got the, yeah, there's yeah. another map. Gave me the map. The portion. And I know it, by the way. I just oh, want yeah. everybody to 100% know it and be on the same page. Nope, that'll do it right there. Okay, this is Wheeler Road. You got the north portion right here. And you got the south portion right here. Yes, sir. You've got second there, which takes you through Country Club, around the Joel on the south end by the old auditorium. Um, then you got tenth place right here, takes you out just south of the fire station on Joel Boulevard. Then the next one, sixteenth, which we just completed last fiscal year, that takes you out by Eighteenth Street. You say just completed. What'd you do? Uh, we reconstructed Sixteenth Street, paved it. Um, Tied a connection into Lee County, put some guardrail up over the canal, um, some curb and gutter. You wouldn't have done it. Chairman Wills wouldn't have yelled at you. No, we did that before. We had <laughs> no. to, actually these plans right here were designed several years ago. We never had the money to do it. right now, man. I can't even believe it. Public. So, didn't have the inspiration. Good Christian man. <laughs> so the intent is right now we stop. No residents can go any further north than this, other than if you own a couple tracks of land in here and you got, you know private 10 acre 20 acre track you said you said from 23rd north they can't go any further essentially they can't go any further yes sir so the intent is to design and permit a new road northward to get the towns and canal grade which is 0.27 miles yes what okay it says on the map i gave you yes sir that's the intent we'd also like to construct a road south right this way around this large acreage right here and the reason being is 
the road used to be in there when it was Lehigh Development Corporation that turned into, they spun off their drainage into Le uh, East County Drainage District, which now is the Lehigh Acres Municipal Service Improvement District, or LAMSID, and the road was de is destroyed. So Shay, what you just said is on that piece, you don't want to have the red line going that way? No, we do. We want to build this road right like here. Like there, okay. To connect. Tie it together. The southern community to the northern community. You okay. can travel. So you want to you want to have a road from 13th to 10th. Yes. And you do not have a, anything right now. We you have a moral have, road. We don't have. Well, we have a little bit of a moral road. It's okay. just a. So they're not connected. They're, they're, they're not connected. And if you drive that way, it's bumpy. Four wheelers, ATVs. That's fine. We have to get easements along 10th from various property owners, and along 13th place. But then, on the north south leg. Uh, Lamb said, said they're willing to give us an easement. So we have long, an easement to tie it in, and that would be connectivity for that community. How long is it uh, from there to 80? Uh, let's see. Map map. I want to say it's a little over a mile and three quarters from the 23rd north. We make it hard for them people to get into Henry County. Thank you. Thank you. Probably go to Lehigh. Basically, a mile and three quarters that we'd need. Of that mile and three quarters, it's three quarters of its Townsend. So about a mile you need to construct to Townsend Canal grade. So the, the question that I have on that on that portion of it, it's going to come out awful close to that guardrail. Are we going to run into issues with that? Are they going to put a turning lane? So when they do make the U-turn coming from the bell to get back to that, they'll have to make a U-turn to come back to that. Are they going to construct have to a turning lane? If it warrants, I don't know if it'll, it'll probably warrant it one day, but not right off the bat. But we ought to build it right now. No. Yes. Right Why would we not build the turning lane right now? Because we need to build the road to get there. The turn so lane would be a turn lane to nowhere. I wasn't right talking now. about Oh, that. no, I'm seeing I'm as we move DOT forward. Road, yeah. yeah. So quick to say no to me. If Commissioner <laughs> Harris would have said that, you'd be like, yeah, it's a great idea. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Harris. Dang, that's yes. not a monkey farm. You're right, it's primates. Primate sanctuary. Got lectured Where? by Dr. Mazzotti about that. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. So that's basically. We originally wanted the road to go north through this area and tie into a full median opening, but right. the developer's not keen on that. So it may change in the future. Who knows? Can, can, can I tell you why I think it's a great idea not to go straight north is, is just the speed associated. You know, if you have those calming curves, right. slow everybody down. <clears throat> um, all right. So, Mr. Chair, what do you and Shane need from us to, to start making this happen? Because if you're waiting on Shane to get easements, you're going to be sitting here a long time. We had to get 12 easements for the force main. I still don't think he has them. And don't get me started on Christopher Lane and Pioneer because we're still missing some of those too. I've been elected since 08. I've been asking him since 06. How's it going? I was asking him about this whenever Rock was still the county engineer. We still well, have the new here. information that we're receiving, Shane. What do we got to do? He is well, he is pretty as I told you at the last board meeting, we're putting an RFQ out now that we got all the projects done and utilities out. We're going to Wheeler Road. We got one to do in Mid County. So for Wheeler Road, we'll put out a design for design services for design and permitting. For I would like to, it'll be a, it'll be this segment right here. It'll be this right here: design and permitting and due diligence, preparation of easements and stuff for people to sign, permitting documents, and that'll go out probably not this week but next week. So uh, in reality, in a perfect world, everything reality, just fell right into place for you. I mean, and we know it's, it's not. It's going to be a couple of years till yeah. we get construction, but we'll have a design and permit it. Um, Ian and Jennifer are working on finding how much exact cash carry for it balance we have, but we know we have eighty thousand. That's just a drop in the bucket of what it's going to cost. But at least once we have it designed and permit it, then we can go out for a loan. And we went for a loan here on Wheeler Road South, the second, and we did tenth, and that was a loan. It was like a ten-year, twelve-year note. We didn't end up doing the same thing. And you didn't help from DOT? It's not farm to market. It's just residential. So they got certain criteria in their scop and scrap. And you'd be up against other counties who have farm to market needs. So. And or sell. That we, yeah, we would exactly. Be away. So we would really, I'd prefer to spend the money on 833, 835. Actually, 835 has got several projects. So, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll, so Shane, let me, let me ask a handful of other questions. So when I look at that piece from 10th, to 13th right now, you're telling me that that's a, that's a rabbit trail that you can take your side by side and go down right now? No, it was actually a road one time that Lehigh built and then with, they, they handled all the drainage and they formed a 298 and then it became Lamb said now it's a different number, governmental entity. They improved their canal system, sold all their spoil 
And when they did, they destroyed that road and actually just, it just went away. And four by four and side by sides drove down it. They somewhat threw some rock on it here recently to go to one of their projects they're looking at doing a drainage project. They being Lehigh. Lampset. Lampset. Right. And so now the intent would be to get an easement, build a road that would be county maintained and have spreader swale on the side for water quality and discharge into their canal. The road is moral. The road is somewhat moral, yes. Okay, no, no, the road that you're wanting to build would be moral. Huh? I'd like to build a moral road and with eventually pave it the, with the, the with, to pave it. With, with enough fill, with enough backbone to it that the contractor that ultimately wins the project can come in and build on that road with just a little bit of improvement. The contract would come in and build it all? The, no, 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 sir, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, is the road that you want to install right, right. now, the, the improved moral road that you want to mm -hmm. install would, would have so much uh, foundation to it that it wouldn't have to be completely removed, whitewashed. Correct. All they'd have to do is skim off the top. Yes, maybe, sir. Or maybe add a little bit, yes, rip it in, and then pave it. Come back, do their core samples, and right. say, here we go. Okay. I'd not even do core samples. They'd be done. They, they would know because there, there is no core to punch. Okay. Right. So, so my question is, that right there, just, you know, I mean, looking at 1.25 miles, you can look at any of your MSBUs and know what you're talking about from a standpoint of how, mm -hmm. how many linear feet or how many miles it costs you to do that per, per mile, what it is. So you have that number off your hip. Nope. We're working. You mobilize our dump trucks, our grader, you put our humans out there, and you go. And we can build in-house. But we're, the good thing is Lampson is doing a construction project there. They're estimated to generate probably more dirt than what we need, definitely more dirt than what we need, 500,000 cubic yards. And we're asking them... If we could buy that dirt, build up what we need, the base, maybe haul some here and there. up here to the yeah, north and have it on. on the other end. Right. right then. We don't need it all. We don't need 500000 I got 700000 at LaBelle Airport, and we're not going through it. So, But there would be enough there to do road improvements, and they sent over a draft agreement for me to review and communicate with Mark and then to come between the boards to get approved. So. All right, so what are we waiting on? Waiting on Shane. Waiting on me. Do an RFQ. Do are we advertise. not waiting on South Florida, though, to? Well, not for that portion. Not, not for, for that not for portion, portion, but as a whole. We need to I need a consultant on board here because I'm going to design and permit that through the Water Management District. I got you, you do design. have to design and permit that through the Water Management District? Yes. But you have a team of consultants that are in your wheelhouse that you can already that's look what, through. That's what I'm going to use. I'm okay. going to hire a consultant through the RFQ process. But you already have. No. That will be a site-specific engineer. Okay. I've got engineers lined up on different projects. So will be there, include that one, and include this one up here. And there'll be some environmental work up there. They'll have to do some due diligence, go for tortoises and relocation well, we could, and clearance. Uh, what Commissioner Turner's saying, we could queue up that one portion now. Yeah. And the intent, yeah, we can queue that one up there now for designing. And I'd also like to go up here and then queue some work in there and clear out, clear and grub the right of way out. And then I can, can over you, time, be bringing in fill that's okay. just fill dirt. The last part, I didn't see what you want your to say. So let's start at the top, 0.73. Is that section one? Is that what you're saying, the 0.73? You would clear and grub that, or you would clear and grub the 0.27, or you'd clear and grub 0.76 where it the needs to happen? 0.76. 0.76. Not the whole length, but I'd like to go. Right, but Shane, there. you know if you, if, you, if you mobilize Kaplan, they give you a number, mm -hmm. you're going to get more bang for your buck to, to clear and grub 0 0.73, 0 0.27, 0 0.76. Right, but I, up here I have limited easements in place. I don't have all the easements. I only have we, – we got easements from willing sellers. So let's say we go probably three-tenths of a mile. But hold more. on. A willing seller, we don't need to buy Not easement. willing seller. We're willing – landlords are willing to give us an easement. Okay. So we've got easements from all these folks. Some of them don't want to give us an easement. But what I'd like to do is, at the end of 23rd, clear and grub, do all my gopher tortoise relocates, and lease extend the road 0.3 tenths of a mile. Move it on up. Get it cleared out. Start bringing in fill dirt Point from Lampsid. Bring it in. Set it in. Start, and then slowly over time, we can add the rock in and stuff. Okay. Well, and at least have it open it questions. up. When's yes. Lampsid's project supposed to kick off? You said they have a project queuing up. They've now. got. They've already got some dirt stockpiled out, and they've got out. another one that's going to be coming in. So do you have to have those easements that they won't give you? You can't. We have to. Yes, we'll eventually have to have those easements. But we do have some now where we could do some clearing and do some work, which would show movement, which may entice the other landowners to give us an easement to open up to their property. You'd think they'd be for that. Well, you'd be surprised when you call them. You can't. Well, I wouldn't them. be surprised because let me tell you why, Shane. If, if I live in, in Commissioner Wills, I don't know if you've covered this with a majority of the owners, but. I consider Pioneer one of the safest communities in all of the county because there's, you know, it's keyhole. One way in, one way mm -hmm. out. Everybody be knowing your business in Pioneer, right? Right. 
and Pioneer for a handful of years asked me, can we get that road, that, the power line road, Alico prop, you know, to get that in. And, I, you know, I, we have an agreement now on an emergency, we will. And then we have to exit out on WIT with, with Blue Groups, which I don't know if they still own it. But we can get out of Pioneer if we need to. If there's a catastrophic situation, right. we can get out of Pioneer at least three ways, not just one. You feel very confident that when we open this up, we're not going to have people filled up in here losing their minds because we've allowed now every – Oh, they're getting bombarded now because they because they can't get a sheriff out there. It takes forty five minutes to an hour to get a sheriff from somebody out here. Like Lee County can get there. Okay, yeah. all right. So we need to have this. We need it. Yeah. All right. So Shane, then, then the only thing I would disagree with you and disagree is probably too strong of a word is I just think that we need to start the process right now. To, you know, of of the point seven three, the point two seven, and the point seven six of knowing whose easements we need to get, and we need to stage. X number of cubic yards of dirt somewhere up there in a giant mound. If if we don't own it, I know I know one of those areas up there. You know we we can stockpile, and then you put those as carrots out there to whoever. Who, you know, actually, no, we we're gonna do that in house. Your your road and bridge department can handle that. We're gonna build some of it, and some of it we may use it. But I'd like to use some of it in house to build. But we we're gonna do it where we have easements because we can't work outside our easements. We can get our permit from yes, the district sir. and say. We have the authority to condemn and do whatever to get it, but we're not going to do that. We can get a permit. The 1.25, it looks like it's a, it's just a handful of owners on the 1.25 on the very bottom part. Am I missing that? When I see all the small blocks, that's multiple owners. The giant green block in there, that's yeah, clearly. What it is is you got probably, let's say, 10 owners on 13th place. Yes, and sir. you probably got maybe eight owners. And I say that because there's one large warehouse. Yeah. And I cannot think of the gentleman's name. Can you tell me his okay. name? Linden. Linden. Weiser. Weiser. Yeah, Roy Tillman gave you permission to go in these easements. We haven't pursued 10th and 13th place yet to get easements. And it sounds like it's easy, but we've been focusing on Wheeler Road. Wheeler because Road, when they Wheeler. come in for a right-of-way permit, we're like, hey, do you want to give us an easement? Because we, we, we don't maintain the roads unless you have an easement out there. we got to get all the easements on the road. A lot of times, like, no, leave it as is. We're not going to worry about it. I'm just building the house. I don't care. And then sometimes they're like, yes, we want to give them all to you. And we'll get like a uh, 13 or 14 different parcels that we can prepare legal descriptions for. So it's hit or miss. But we've been focusing on the north-south side. And on the north side, and like, for example, this area right here, we send out letters about every year, and we're missing eight there. But I've been glad glading the road for probably 12 years. So I just by virtue of maintenance, I can claim – Access, get a document, record it via Mark's help. So, Mr. <laughs> Chair, what is when are, you said is Lancet? When are they getting ready to do their work? I don't have an exact date, but I know they've already dug one canal, a tie-in canal. And they have stockpiled material, so that that won't be the problem. Is to, they're going to stockpile it in the right away, and we can use it whenever we want it to be a set price to buy it. That's pretty much the terms of the agreement that I saw the draft version. The intent right now is to move forward with design and permitting. That's the big hurdle. And what you're telling us is that you don't have staff on hand that can go after, go after, can engage in a conversation with the constituency to get those easements. You need assistance from an outside entity. No. Well, no. what I'm telling, I'm not really telling you anything except giving you an update on what we're doing with the project. I'm just saying that we're going to go out. You asked what the next step was. Request for qualifications for a design consultant for permitting and design services. And what that is is I need an environmentalist for the gopher tortoises removal. If there's any there, I'm sure there is up on the north end of 23rd. Um, permitting through the water management district and some design work and then some due diligence about how we're going to work with the uh, primate facility about how we're going to get around tie-in towns and canal grade. We got Typically, we're asking for 30 feet from each landowner for 60 feet width, but we may need who knows on the north side we may need a pond site and they have to have a larger easement, but that's to, that's to be determined in the design. Say thirty feet, they will say no. You're so you're telling me that on the one point two five mile, right now, on the very bottom end between yes. tenth and thirteenth. One point two five miles. If you went in there right now, because in a magical world that we live in, you can mobilize your dump trucks tomorrow, put your grader out there and, and have Phil ready to set out. Who's stopping you from doing that? Uh, Lancet e and sells Phil. Well, a couple lamps it is South because it's their, it's their land. Okay. And I got to have an easement for So them. now they give you the easement. Now who's stopping you? We need a permit for creating that impervious service from the water management district. But there's already an impervious service there. You just said it's old. It's old and gone, but they're still going to, it wasn't permitted. They're going to make you get a permit. It's like gone now. So, you, so you're coming up so high 
coming up so high, making a new facility. We're going to permit the outfall east. Lamps would also issue us a permit too because it's outfall into their district. They'll want to review the plans. All right. So, well, but Mr. it can be done, Mr. Chair. Um, we're looking for an RF RFQ. That'll be advertised this Friday. It'll be posted next week. But there's nothing for you to do other than just give them an update. It'll okay. come back before you probably in a month saying this is who the design consultant is. It'll be advertised for four weeks. Kind of back up just a second. I mean, in a perfect world, we'd love to have 60 feet, but if we can only get mm -hmm. 30 feet, we can't put a road in that? It's narrow. You're not going to have enough for water quality. What are you talking about? It's, it's a 30-foot uh, road. You know, 20 foot road, and you got your shoulders. You build it to Green Book standards. you got to have... Well, I get it, but, I mean, we, if we can't get the Taj Mahal, can't we get a, a trail? I mean, I'm just... No, I'm just, a two lane road, simple you need two lane 60, road. You need 60 feet, two lane road, we'll put some shoulders on a swale on it. I guess you want to put and the we can get Mr. Harris won't sidewalk. No, there won't be enough room for sidewalks. It'll be shoulder swale. But he was being facetious. He doesn't yeah. really want sidewalks out there. He I, wants I a know. road. I hope he doesn't take either. a 30 foot road. Why yes. can't we have a 30 foot road? I'm just talking about a 30 foot easement. The road's 20 foot. I get it. You got 10 foot running lanes and you got a foot on each side. So there's no, 20 feet. We got Mark Lewis feet. Is I'll, six give you, feet I'll give you an example. <laughs> For this debate, go to Case and Evans, and then you come back and we'll talk about it. You'll see the road just cracking along the edges because there's no shoulder. Okay, but Case and uh, Evans yeah, is but Case and Evans been there over 50 years. Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's still so we cracking. Can grow. It's, it's cracking. <laughs> what are you saying? You hate been there government over 50 guy years. right now. You, you just told us to look at Case and Evans. Yes. Uh, that how many humans traverse every, every day? Semis, yes. dump The problem truck. you have on that road is you have roads driving down, there's no shoulder, and it's dropping off into the ditch. Jane, I love yeah. Follow on B road. I, love, I have so much respect for your engine year of the year in the state of Florida. Oh my god. <laughs> but what I I am I am so confused right now why we can't put a 30 foot Marl Road in. And, and and listen, we go for the 60 foot easement request, but why are you yeah. so adamant that we we because you're vehemently long, against this? Long term that's what you need. And if you put it in the 30, then we have to move it over later and it's a waste of taxpayers dollars. It just Say that last part again now. It's a waste of No, no, taxpayers no, no. The, the, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> <move it> over. <laughs> yes. Say it, you know? You have to move it over. It's for example, in Pioneer, we had people put roads in. They're on one side of the 30 feet, and you can't, and they're narrow. Uh -huh. You have to end up moving them over later, put them in the right spot to put swales for proper drainage. It's just, it's just not enough room. If you do it, do it right the first time. I, I don't disagree with you, yeah. but. But I don't see, but we don't have an issue. I mean, like over here, these lots right here, the road goes right down the center of the lot line. There's 30 foot on one side, 30 foot on the other. You're just asking a landowner to give an easement over an existing easement. Okay, and so you don't feel, so you, what you're saying is, is that relax, 13th to 10th, a.k.a. the 1.25 miles, you don't see an issue with us getting a 60-foot easement? No. The issue is going to be whether they want to give you an easement at all. Okay. It's not a matter of the width because out <clears throat> there, it's, a, it's, it's just easements at Lehigh dedicated to all the landowners, and they're 30 foot in width. There's a 30 foot along the front and a 30 foot along the rear for road and drainage. The problem is we want an easement over top of that, which it wouldn't be an issue, but the residents don't understand that. They don't understand why they're giving you something. Yeah, I understand why they don't get it either, especially when you want 60 versus 30. <laughs> no, only 30 My car's only them. 8 feet wide. Only uh -huh. 30 from them. Go out there and flag it and let them look at it. And we've done that. We went out and met residents and sat there on the road and said, I'm going to show you where your 30-foot land's at. And they're like, oh, okay, I thought I was given 30 more feet of my property. They forget that they own to the center line of the road because the surveyors on their survey will stake their lawn corners at the easement because they're going to get tore out. Please don't tell me on the center line of the road. I'm getting chewed up and down on Murray Road about that still. They don't own to the center. Of Murray Road. Oh, they different. say they own all the way across the road. Murray Road, they do. <laughs> hey. They do. The 30 foot is on their property. They own the whole road. All right. So, so how wide is Murray Road? Say it again. Murray Road easement. How wide? It's wider than. <laughs> 30 feet. <laughs> no, huh? 30 feet by Ben Moore. Not enough to do any kind of swales for drainage. And you I did it right the first time. I didn't build yep. it. <laughs> See what you did? You. Wasted taxpayers. I did. All right. So yeah, really tell here, to tighten up on our down there. There's not a problem getting the 60. It's it's. Well, no, I was just the only reason. The only reason I was throwing that out is if if, if, if 30 foot was going to stop a road, I didn't want 30 foot no, to stop a no, road. No, no, no. All those side streets you see, 13th and all those, every one of them, they own to the center. There's 30 foot one way, 30 foot to the other. We used to we used to maintain that years ago. I graded it myself. Mm -hmm. Down the side of the canal, we turned and went all the way to a gate back to the west. We used to maintain that. I guess we don't do that no more. The, the west portion of it, we just mo just do the canal we side. We all we maintain is right there at Thirteenth. No, no, I'm here. talking about on the on the canal itself, down the canal grade. On the south canal, we go right there to where it bends and takes a ninety. We stop right there. We go all the way to the gate. 
You know, we don't go to the gate. We stop when it comes down. When you're coming down Townsend Canal Grade, yes. it makes a bend. You can continue on. There's another gate down there, but we don't go, go away. In the turn to the farm down there. Right. Well, we just turn right, and it goes up to several different tracks. Who owns that, Mr. Chair Shane, on the point seven three that we'd have to get easement from? Let's see here. Go very tippy top. Well, I got to switch one where I can see better. Okay. The the point seven three we have easements there already. Those are in place. That's in the yellow. That's Townsend Canal Grade. We maintain that. Let's talk about the point two seven. And then the point two seven is different landowners. Some of it's Lambsid, which which shouldn't be a problem. And the various landowners right there. I don't know their names off the top of my head. But um, there's one strip that's owned by um, SoFlo Ag. You have a, but you have a 30-foot easement on the point seven three. The what? The point seven three at the very north end. We have actually, you're right, it does, it varies, and there's like no room to do anything. It's 30 feet, but actually we blade more than 30 feet. We keep the pepper bushes on one side, and we blade over into the other property. And we can't even do anything there. It's all, it's a whole, the whole discussion is for naught, because <laughs> we don't have 60 foot on the north end. Right. So. Give us the names, see if we Fix know, we can reach out to them. Tell me where I'm wrong, that's what I'm you trying. just told me. I'm trying. Why, so, so do we go back and ask for 30 more feet? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to get 30 feet from them. We already have. They were, they were willing to go. Was it 60 more? Does everybody see my conundrum now? They were going to give us 10 more. We get the, the magic number of 40, but we were hoping to get to 50. So you're just being greedy with 60. Is what but south, no. Oh, go for that landowner. Yes. Landowner. Okay, so, so, so Shane, as it relates to that north end, we're already blading that. We're already blading it. And we're it's good in there. good condition. In a perfect world, you had the money. It's, it's not an issue. You could issue a contract today. To, to have somebody come in and assess how much it would cost to pave all that, and they would I, be able to I use it. No, I would not pave it. I would advise you not I know. to pave it. Well, you're, not advi hell. you're advising us not to because of liability aspect. For the guardrail. Well, we're going to do a guardrail, and we're going to have a conversation with the district. What, right. My question is, I didn't ask any of those okay. other things. My question is, in a perfect world, we have guardrail that goes up. We have all that. You, we could put numbers together and have an assessment of what that would cost, and they have enough fill there that they could utilize that as a base to be able to pave. They're going to redo that whole, they're going to cut, there's a high spot in that road. They're going to actually cut it off and move it around because the district has a 50-foot wide easement. We have a 30-foot. They're going to fill in. After you get off our 30 feet, it drops off. Maybe like 40 feet, it drops off. They're actually going to take dirt from the high end of Townsend Canal Grade, push it north, and fill in there right away. And then they're going to move the cars over, put the sheet piling in. They're going to put in new rock to um, our specifications. On the, on the west end. On, on the end on we're talking Towns, about. On the Townsend Canal grade, they're going to put rock in our roadway within our easement, and then they're going to put guard, well, we're pushing for them to put a guardrail for, we say it's a life safety issue, and they've got their hazard, which is the sheet piling within the clear zone. So now we're asking them to put the guardrail up and get it set where it could be paved or push them to get paved. If not, we could pave it. But the guardrail is the big ticket item. So how, they're going to have to push the road over. They are. How, how many feet do they have to push? Well, they've got 50 feet they can work in. That's it. So they're going to they're going to push it over, have MOT set up. That's not worked out how that's exactly going to happen at night, but that's some of the questions we had. If they go over 2-4, they won't pipe it, will they? Well, they've got to have an outfall back to the canal for a drainage because there's a ditch on the one side. Big money. Cutting it down is going to help a lot, though. That's going to take a lot of that height away. It is, and there's some bad spots because we buried some rock with Jarvis, and there was some textile fabric because we were having a bad clay pocket. So they've got some stuff to do in there. Well, I, I, I think we need to. I think we need to expedite that conversation on the guardrail and having that with them. Well, they've already we, sent us. They sent us a draft set of plans from. I think it's Lane or I don't know the name combination, but they sent us a set of plans. Oh, Lane and Preglio. Yes, they okay. sent some plans over to South Florida Water Management District. Their project manager for the reservoir says, Shane, we want you to take a look at this before we comment. So oh, they, so they're, they're talking about a change. Okay. So we commented, and they wanted to say, this is your road access. We have an easement. We don't want to interfere with traffic. Let us know what's going on. What are your thoughts? They, gave, they showed me their comments. I gave them my comments. I sent it back. Now they're waiting on something to come back from the contractor. The reason I brought the guard, uh, the um – Learning land earlier was because you're adding a huge development portion of that yeah. on and you know getting on and getting off of 80 there. And the turning lane is a, the turning lane is peanuts. If it's a half a million dollars, it's peanuts to the grand scheme of thing. 
And what you said, if you're going to do it, do it right the first yeah, time. Absolutely, I said that. But so right so now, we, sh we should do it inner, ingress and egress, both of them. We'll be able to, the one portion that's being oh, asked about the guardrail of the bridge yes, sir. is right there. But we would be able to definitely, after you make that U-turn, there should be a turning lane for them to get off of 80 to get on the It would road. be nice. I mean, oh, it's, it's a, Shane, you got to think 20 years from now. That's going to be a necessity. I, I am, but I mean, I was right now. You range. <clears throat> I was looking at the gun range. I didn't have the area to do it. And there's yeah. not nowhere near. That the traffic. The I don't want to use it, but that's that's exactly right. what I was thinking of the Whit Road. My intent is, you asked in a perfect world to do first before the turn lane. You want to get you want to get that connection to Townsend Canal Bridge, which you want to do. Yes, sir. That's that's where you need to instead of putting the money in the turn lane to build an argument DOT that it goes nowhere. You need to build this to come up. But what, what, what I'm saying is, is that we have we have a collective conversation. Yeah. I don't know if it's Drew Bartlett, the executive director of South Florida Water Administration, if it's Libby Pigman, or if it's um, and with the secretary of DOT and, you know, whoever the contractor is for Lane and Preglio sitting in there and we have this because if you're talking about just under a seven figure adder to that on, on the final phase being right. $476 million and they left $180 million on the table, they're going to be able to find that. They're going to be like, you know what? We have a contingency of 20% and we haven't burned into that. They're, they're going to be able to find that on this in my, in my humble opinion. And I didn't realize that Lane and Preglio had all of that as easement for access. So that's a that's a complete game South, changer. South Florida has a fifty foot easement, which which obviously they're utilizing right now. Yes. So, Shane, I think you know I think that they're getting into the final two years of that contract. And with what you said, you're spot on. In a perfect world, if we were if we were able to hit on all cylinders on this, we're we're two years before we're turning dirt. But if you have a multi billion dollar multinational that's out there that can just bring equipment over and they do the 0.73. They hire the guardrail contractor who's probably going to have to do some things on the entrance and exit out of the 43 and then some stuff up on parking and things like that. They just roll that right over there in, into the total contract with the first 0.73, which you're 100% spot on, and I agree wholeheartedly. Then, then they come down just a little bit, and they go to the spot between 13th and 10th. They're already mobilized because they're going to need to guardrail that. No, they don't need to, they don't need a guardrail. Why is that, boss? Because it, the right of way is like 150 feet Lamson has. Okay. And the canal's on the far side. Okay. And we're only you there's a there's a wide difference. Yes, sir. You don't okay. need to worry. The guardrail is only I got you. You you don't have to say anything no, more. No, I understand no. it now. So yeah. so the point I'm making Shane is that I use this a lot, but I think you have some low-hanging fruits to be harvested here, but I think we need to expedite the conversation to put it in front of the right people's you know, wheelhouse right now so they can start having that conversation because they're trying to complete, you know, complete a, you know, you look at that, you look at the water control structure right there on the second block down. Harry Pepper's tied up there for another two years. Lane and Preggly is doing the whole, you know, enchilada right. over there for the next two years. What they have versus what they're, what Harry Pepper is doing is, is a much bigger scope. So for them to roll over and jump on this first point seven three, I don't think it's a big, it's not a big pill for the district to swallow. I don't need to speak out of turn, but I don't think that's going to be a major thing that's going to stop them. I think it builds goodwill and it creates a life safety issue moving forward. And I think that we can also entertain having a conversation with them. What is it, about a million dollars per mile to pay? Yeah, roughly. You know, so, so a little under a million dollars to pave it. So you're, you're looking at $2 million. You get your turn lane. You get, a, you get a little under a mile to pave, and you get guardrail up there. Maybe the guardrail is a quarter of a million. I don't know if it's a half million. It doesn't matter. We'll round up. So it's it's two point five. Right. That's, it, there's a rounding error to that. It would be cheaper for them because a lot of the road they're already rebuilding. That's part of that million. I mean, they're already. Doing but they a need lot to know that road. going right now. You know what I mean? Well, right. it's in the comments to them, so we're waiting on the revised plan to come back. When awesome. we get it back, we'll see what's in it. But How long will it take them to get to the end of Townsend Canal? I don't even know when they're going to start or what, how much time they have allotted they've been in the contract. Until, they've been That's working. tough to be and flushed Shane, out. the last thing I would say to this is I would love for you to look at our hen house numbers. Do we actually have to buy the field from ourselves when we take it from Airglades? You, the board made a motion that no fill can leave Airglades at all unless it's used on Airglades property because we had a complaint from a local vendor that we'd be in competition with uh, mining That's operators. That's great. We'll go revisit that again. Okay. Can you please answer the question that What's I just that? said? So what you said, I think, was no, not only can we not even buy it, we can't even right. let it leave Airglades. But you just mentioned a while ago that we have 700,000 cubic yards of fill at Airglades that's just hanging out. No, we have... 500,000? No, actually, we have 
just about 700,000 at LaBelle Airport from Helms Road that we have. Oh, you said Airglades. Okay, I'm so sorry. LaBelle Airport. We do have some at Airglades too, but that would be. We have two mounds. Yeah, that's too much trucking. Okay, from that good. Way. All but right, at LaBelle I Airport. Making my head hurt but to at LaBelle Airport, no, we don't. The dirt we have stockpiled there, I use that on county projects. I don't charge the MSBU. We don't have to, we don't have to buy it by the MSBU. No, matter of fact. Anyway. Oh, man. I, then, 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 Shane, I. I I say you get your. You, but if you're going to bring that back to us, we're going to approve that that uh that consultant, but and then we're going to move forward with trying to get those easements. And but we're, for, we're building that thing. But for like Lamb said, it's right there. You'd want to buy it from them because it makes no sense to truck in the Lee County back in. You would just be right next door to it. Really hop in a skip. So. Phenomenal. So we will revisit this again with Mr. Chair. You'll get an RFQ probably in a month. A selection saying who we pick for design services. Last meeting in May, we're going to talk about this again. Has to advertise 30 days, so it may be June. The last we got to meet the selection committee meeting to pick them. First last meeting in May, can we can we just have another brief update? Sure. Let us know what the status is. It'll be right there in the FYI, but I can give you an update. It's not a problem. No, no, I don't want the FYI. I want a bullet point, Mr. Chair. Okay, All right. I can do that. Because I think you need to have a conversation with the district between now and then. Okay. Anything else? I will, we'll call you back a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna happen, Shane. This is gonna yeah, happen. We're gonna get there. Okay. These pictures, they speak in volume, boss. Assemblage? You're on there under B. You got anything for staff reports? Yeah. Might as well come on up. We we Badger changed so much, you might as well come take a little pressure off him. Well, uh, the, my uh, staff report was simply to affirm or confirm the hearing dates for June and July because we need to advertise for uh, public hearings and we sometimes you all like to change those dates in June and July. So um, I realized we spoke earlier about the budget meetings and everything which seemed to confirm those dates. So I'm not sure that, uh, um, you know, I need to. 27th, we confirm for the. It's. Last meeting in July. Right. So we, we can't. Have one in last July. meeting in June and then one in July. Have one for the 8th of June and the 27th of July. Of July. Correct. So you're confirming that for me? I'm sorry, I said it both again. Yes. Which, okay. which, meeting, which meetings are we having and which meetings are we not having? We have the first meeting in June. We have that meeting. We're, We're still going to have the first meeting of July. Then we canceled the second meeting in June. We canceled the first meeting in July. We have the second. The first one's there. And the Usually second. just one in June and one in July. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. Perfect. Okay. And I, I guess I have another question is um, the June 8th meeting, is that going to be in Cluiston? Yes. Usually, that's the first one. Okay. It goes Cluiston and LaBelle. On the right, I understand. But, uh, and then July will be here. Okay. Yeah. Because of our scheduling, we need to know that. Thank you. That. Okay. Yes, uh, asking for your permission to move forward with getting some of the uh, Banyan Village parcels. Oh, out of the tax status. Second. Back to Mr. Turner, second back to Mr. Bird. Any further discussion? In favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And on uh, plus, uh, they have some debt um, that staff wants to refinance with the low interest rates that are in place right now. It's three bonds. And so they have to be um, so, uh, bond council with neighbor back when they were issued and recommending that they be selected to handle the refinance of them. And so this is the agreement. Hey. Uh, there's 25k I don't I don't know Steve I don't know I have no I have no background on this whatsoever Mark obviously they have familiarity with it but we don't have anybody that that we we don't even entertain sending that out to get an assessment well I can say that uh, first bank which is the lender here um, they well first of all I asked them whether their bank council which has handled the paperwork for our loans not bonds but loans in the past like like the six million dollar and the whatever it may be yes sir done it, they didn't do the six million center state did that but for the ones we've done with first bank they had a local attorney that did that work and i said are you, are you using him and they said no 
fun to go outside, and I think bigger. Okay. Um, and so they contacted um, Lewis Longman and Walker out of right. West Palm Beach, and their attorney said that he would do it for $28,000. Okay. So, and then we pay. You know, and so then I was thinking, okay, well, you guys are picking the attorney, and we're paying. How about I pick the attorney, or we pay the attorney? We're paying. And so they said, fine. And so Neighbors Gable and Nickerson is a firm that did the bonds originally. We have a relationship with them. Okay. They do exclusively governmental clients. So I said, what would you guys charge for it? And it's 3000 less, not a lot less, but less. And um, so that's why I went with them. All right. So they have a background with it. We're good to go. The, the answer also is, is that there, there is really no one locally that has an expertise in this. I don't want to speak for anybody and say they don't have expertise, but I'm not aware. I mean, I am aware of the local gentleman. I don't want to call his name because they chose not to use him uh -huh. this time. Okay. Um, I, and I don't know why. I didn't ask them why. Um, but I, I do know this is kind of higher profile kind of deal here with USDA rural development being the issuing entity. For these loan, for the well, I mean, I also know the reason why I ask. It's funny you say that, is because I know we have a handful, uh, at least two attorneys I can speak of specifically that that hand USDA. I, I, I guess I love the United States Department of Ag, but I think that they're also a clown show in many respects, and and you know they they routinely you know rule on stuff and they're incorrect, and then they go to court and they lose time and time and time again, and so I was just wondering, you know, do we do we do we have to have I don't mean to use the phrase high profile, but 25K seems like a lot of money. We're paying for it. We're coming out of pocket. Usually your outside counsel is what, $50,000 that you have on a, on a like you know, 40 yes, sir, on a, a year. on a yearly basis. Yes, sir. And so you're exasperating a huge percentage of that budget on one fell swoop. Is this time sensitive? Do we need to pull the trigger right now? Well, I'll let Jennifer address the time sensitivity issue. I mean, but what, what would be your alternative that would make it? I just, I, I look at something like this, Mark, and I just want to make sure, I don't have an alternative tonight, but I want to make sure that we're giving our, our local people the ability to, to hear it, understand it, and, and then have a, have a relationship with you that they feel confident. Mark, I appreciate the call, but I don't have the ability to even issue you a number on this. I mean, we could have that conversation. I have a feeling, you know, there's not a lot of attorneys locally, you yes, know, sir. to be candid. Yep. And I do know that the, the firm in Clewiston works for First Bank, okay. you know, and, and so I think that they're going to function in a, in a I, I don't know this for sure, but I think they're going to be in a capacity. The way it works with a bond is you got bond counsel who kind of makes sure everything is done right in accordance with federal tax law. Then you've got issuers counsel, that's us, we're the issuer, and that's me. And then you've got lenders counsel, so you've got three attorneys who are each playing a role, uh -huh. with the bond counsel being the main role. Uh -huh. And so I have a feeling First Bank, First Bank's going to use McGahee and Perez to uh -huh. be their attorney. Okay. So that takes them out from being bond counsel. Okay. And so then we're left, I mean, I don't want to call out names here, but I mean, we really are so limited here in Henry County. Okay. I mean, yes, sir. All right. So, so is your recommendation to just move forward with this and don't worry about it from a standpoint of trying to, trying to push it out the door? Let's, let's, let's go ahead and I think that we're going to, I'm afraid we're going to have the same answer. Bond counsel is fairly specialized. Do you find that attorneys like Neighbors Gable and Nickerson, their Tampa office, where they have like five to seven attorneys, I think all they do is bonds, mm -hmm. like the five or seven of them. That's all they do. I mean, so, I mean, they do a lot bigger ones than this, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollar ones, but it's fairly specialized. And people don't usually walk in who's a general practitioner and say, yeah, I'll do your bond refinance. I mean, it's kind of outside a wheelhouse for most Attorneys. It's funny you use general practitioners. It's exactly what I was thinking. You, you don't go see Dr. Kaki and get your knee fixed. You go see the orthopod. So, yeah. All right. Well, if you're good with it, um, I guess we'll just move forward. Nobody else has an opinion one way or another on it. No? Uh, you asked the same question as far as um, you know, legal sustainability. That's, if there's none, there's none. So. All righty. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried in the workshop for the federal earmark request before you I emailed the um, staff report for the Harlem Academy the wastewater infrastructure US 20 project um, operations center climate controlled storage we did add that to it because we had a lot of issues having proper storage facilities 
project that we talked about, agricultural crimes investigators. Final. Hey. By Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Bird. Is there a discussion on this item? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. It's going to bring us to business by district. Mr. Iglesias. Uh, I actually just got a question for Shane. Shane, how are you coming along with the EOC roof? Uh, the roof, expecting plans this week according to the architect. So I thought I'd have them today, but probably tomorrow. So, and then from there, once we get the plans, we'll review them, make sure they made all the changes, then we can um, basically solicit quotes from various contractors. We'll hold a pre-quote meeting. We'll do it at the EOC, then come out and look at the roof. We'll give them a certain time frame to respond by, and then we'll bring the quotes back here for approval because I expect them to be close to you know, between three to $500,000 rush that you know we're coming on the rainy season and hurricanes and you got to make sure the EOC is ready to go I understand it'll be able to be used during the hurricane and everything it just has a drip but it'll be good but it's moving fast they had 15 days to do it they've already done their additional due diligence during that time Alan Bowen made them on site so they can talk about their adhesive they need to use on the roof and so they haven't missed a beat yet you're welcome oh. round sugar's coming up this weekend so Everybody be safe. Um, coming up, we just need to be prepared. Thank you. Second that. First, about the red light on Helms Road. It would be in a week or two. It's a lot of mic time. Do y'all notice that? <laughs> For the record, Shane. Um, waiting on DOT to approve the signing and marking, signing and pavement marking plans. Those were um, sent to DOT probably two weeks ago. I emailed them today. said, you know, what's the status? They said they look good. Submit a permit. I'm like, I've already submitted a permit. Please advise. So now I'm just waiting on them to tell me they're good so that we can go out to bid for those improvements. And those are new signs that will be flashing that said that will show a signal sign with a flash head on all four quadrants, so north, south, 29, east, west, homes. Stop bars, um, replace any missing RPMs. 80 will be the same as it is now. 80 will remain the same as it is now until it trips. And then DOT is actually doing a signal warrant analysis at 80 and 29. Even though 29 was approved, they went ahead and did a signal warrant analysis, even though they gave us approval. Did both of them fall apart? Well, 80, you got a spot to get in the middle and then jump across. How difficult is it to get a, a signal a signal warrant analysis performed? It's not real difficult. I mean, it takes some time, but it's not hard to do. So you can make that request and they'll do it? No, not not the department. We could, I thought you meant like hire a consultant to do it. Oh. Um, no, I, I think. I thought the DOT did that if it was merit being requested by us. We asked. I'm asking specifically for flag hole in 27 and 835 right. in 27. Well, the one at Helms. We were pushing for the, we wanted to signal up for safety issues, and we fought that. And then we were pushing for them to do the signal, and they said a warrant analysis had to be done. So we didn't want to wait on them. We wanted to have it done in hand and come to the table to discuss it instead of delaying out a few months. And that, that, could have, that gave us an advantage. What did that cost us? I don't know off the top of my head. It was well, We had a contract with a lump sum fee, and uh, I'm sorry, not to exceed dollar, and we've just been billing against it. I don't okay. know. So it was with the contract that was already on site, is what you're saying? We use Johnson Engineering. Okay. I mean, I could find out the price it took to do it. And we I, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, the reason why I ask that is, is I would love to know what that cost, Shane, and I would love to have an estimate from them to do that for those two that I just mentioned. Are you talking about a cost in light? No, ma'am. No. I'm, I'm, I'm saying uh, an assessment to say, do we meet the need for this, or, or are we still way under the threshold? We've had, I think, two deaths at 835 and 27 in, in less than a year. That should qualify. So you're saying you want, but you're saying you. I want to know: Do we need a stoplight at 8:35 and 27, where 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 Everkane Road dead ends into 27? Mm -hmm. And I want to know: Do we need one at Flag Hole Road in 27? I'll find out the cost. Between 11 and 12, 40 no roads. 11, 12, how, how long is that away? 
Kirby Thompson, eighty to Fortinet Bridge. That one year, two years. Say that again, sir. I'm sorry. You said eleven, twelve. What? That's what the number is on here. Oh, Kirby the, Thompson. Let's talk about seventy-eight from the bridge to eighty. Seventy-eight from the bridge. To, oh, from the bridge to Fort Thompson to the bridge. Eighty. Bridgeway. Okay. Ask what's the question? Fort Denode, not He's Fort talking about Fort Denode Road. Yeah. Fort Denode Road from from eighty to Bridge. You last board meeting, you approved a contract. We issued the notice to proceed today for the CEI contract. We got all all contracts executed, and how that'll work, um, commissioners, is that. The paving contractor is on State Road 82 doing some work, and he said he wants to jump in and get it, but he's going to do his pipe work first. So we'll issue the notice to proceed. He'll do some pipe work at Old Riverton, Old Fort Denode subdivision, and he'll jump down in the curve and do some pipe work, and then he'll stop. And then when he gets off the one job, he'll move in and pave, remix the road. How long is that away? Uh, they'll probably maybe two months, a month and a half. I don't know, somewhere around there. Well, the plans are done, and you've already approved the you've already approved the bids and. The, Executed a contract, so. Oh, I do. Publicly acknowledged. Anything? Oh, else? I got chewed on that too. Yeah. Better First, they hated it because it was tearing up the vehicles. Then they hated it because the vehicles were getting too fast. Anything else? Well, no. The 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 one portion there, that one. Uh, box culvert we were looking at is it adequate or we got to do any changes to that when they start that paving project no or? if we did we wouldn't have enough money we'd have to do a drainage analysis to find out if we had to upsize it but we've already cleaned it out i think it's adequate now to i think it's adequate and we've cleaned upstream now if the south florida water management district is talking about having a discharge that they're still doing some design right. due diligence about coming down banana branch and at that point in time we told them they have to increase the box culvert so it may or may not happen, but that's down the road. Brand new road there, go back there and cut it in two. That little the, the I two understand. structures. The, if they're if they're talking about, I, I was I don't understand that we're talking about two structures, like you said, upstream back towards back towards the reservoir area. If that's the case, then that that would help us as far as water flow. It's going it's going to that's to Fort Simmons. If they could send water down there, that would be nice. It was I went by the other day; it was dry. It just had little puddles in it. Uh, that's so. Question out about that, sir. Uh, just a quick synopsis. Um, I think I think y'all all got an email that was sent to me from Commissioner Donna Sorda Long. Yeah, she was misunderstood. Yeah, was misrepresented a little bit. Um, I'm I'm gonna fire back to her. I'm not gonna reply all to you all, but uh, the gist is is um, I want to know how that conversation ended up. How did, it, how did it end up? Because I think our goal there with the EMS building on the north side of the river is to simply be able to park an ambulance on that side of the river, and in the event somebody calls 911, we want to be able to respond. Am I making it too simple? No. Okay. Uh, that's, that's our intent to stage an existing ambulance side of the river in this particular area. I'll agree to, to do this. Um, their, the proposal that was presented to both boards was that Glades County wanted to put an ALS fire unit in that same station, which fire truck. Okay. So that is a cost, a large cost. Um, it's like a half a million dollar cost to us. Ninety-something thousand dollars to Glades County. Glades County. Okay. So that was the that was in the letter that she sent. Okay. Um, but. I that's where that number came from. I'm not coming up with that number. That was my understanding is what she said the number was. So that was, you know, of issue or concern, I believe, of her. And there was some conversation at the end. And um, and then you had made a com. you know, everybody was trying to hear. You were on the phone. Um, you had made a comment at the end of that meeting. And that was miss. Well, but I don't remember exactly what I said, but the gist of what I said was, Here's, let me rephrase what I said. I kind of think that the conversation was getting off the rails a little bit and outside Us. of the scope of, yeah, of what our goal was. I'm not talking about it from a standpoint of dollars and cents. I'm talking about it from a standpoint of meeting the merit of what we're trying to do. And what I've heard Commissioner Wills and Commissioner Harris say time and time again is, and correct me if I'm wrong, we need to have a fire truck, but more importantly, we need to have an ambulance that doesn't have the ability to get impeded by an opening of a bridge on that side of the river staged. 
as many hours in a day as we possibly can. That's what I've heard y'all say. And so, so if Blades County was getting a facility constructed, we were, we were going to say, hey, how much is the cost for us to be able to park said vehicle in there instead of us building our own facility? Is that? Well, yeah. we, we jointly um, supported a request in the state legislature, yes, which is funded for now. Um, yep. And then we were looking to split the operating, the facility operating cost of that facility okay. um, with Glades County that would, you know, save them money, save us money. And we were looking to just stage an ambulance there. So we were going to pay, we're paying for the ambulance, if you will. We're also, we were also going to be covering the certain mute for mutual aid for an ambulance. We are also covering part of Glades County on the north side of the river. Which we do or do not do right now. Right now we do it for mutual aid. We do it for mutual aid, but we don't have the ability to guarantee it's going to be on that side of the river when the bridge goes up. That's right. For anyone. Okay. All right. And so we were just staging. We're just just like we do in Montura. We yes, take an ambulance, we stage it. Park it at Central County. Yes, ma'am. All day in Montura, and then at a certain time, I think it's six o'clock. That it goes back to Cluiston. So, but for the North LaBelle, it's the same concept. We were taking one of our and we would stage it on the north side of the river. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't come off the north side of the river if all the other ambulances are busy and transport or whatever. There's a 911 call. It's going to go wherever it needs to go because yes, we're staging. Then the next unit that comes back in service, wherever it's coming from, is going to go back over on the north side of the river, just like we do Montura. Right. So that's, that was our proposal. Okay. There, what they were bringing to the table is they – we do not do ALS fire. We do not do ALS fire. Because it's very expensive. Yes. We're not ready. We, I do not recommend that we do that right now. We're looking to bring forward to you at some time in the near future another concept, much cheaper, save the county money, but also provide a better quality <laughs> service at some of our unincorporated fire stations. Maybe that's something that, that we can talk to them about if they're interested. I'm not sure. And we've already done that at a staff level. Um, so, but what they were bringing to the table is they have ALS fire, and they've had to do that out of necessity, and and we understand that. So we were bringing what we had, which was EMS. They were bringing what they had, which is ALS fire, because we don't have that. And then we were going to cost of that station. And, and that's where we were, and that was the presentation that was presented. So the cost would go up. Like they wanted to do. No, no, no. The cost, the cost, the, the cost stays the same. For us. Off of what Jennifer's saying. Didn't you say we'd save money with you? Fire? No, that's a different Fire conversation. Uh -huh. But we would stand to potentially. Dollars on the un and other Belda um, Pioneer Montura with with maybe some daily stipends like LaBelle Fire. That's does. a different. That's a different totally conversation. Different. Totally different. They totally. Added other I'm language. just. I'm, I'm not trying to muddy the waters. They I'm, added other language, so that's what caused it to elevate okay. with EMS and. So but ALS is a EMT paramedic yes, on a fire truck. That's yes, why it costs so much yes, more. Okay. Where, where did it get left? Where is it left? Uh, They're going back to their board yeah. to have the discussion and then come back to us. But okay. they wasn't on the same page. They okay. Okay. Not, we couldn't so. talk. Okay. I mean, it was that bad. I mean, every time, I mean, their manager tried to speak to explain and, and Donna just shut him down. I they mean, there was, there was no negotiating. There was no conversation. It was just, it was a rough, conver it was just a rough day. Okay. I, it sounded, it sounded a little bit like it was like that, but I couldn't tell. And I couldn't, obviously nonverbal communicate is so important. And I couldn't get any of that through there. I also want to know, too, and when the next time we have that meeting, and I think Ms. Sordalone recommended that in the email that she sent to us, well, y'all got to see the facility, right? So you know what we're dealing with. Um, I say we either, I say we guarantee ourselves that we're going to do it somewhere where we can, we can have that ability for us to zoom in. And then is there any way possible we can make that on the day of a board meeting? Because I can guarantee you I can be there on the day of a board meeting because I pretty much clear my schedule on the day of board meetings to be able to be prepared for it. And would we be receptive to maybe doing it? You know, it seems like we're getting pretty good at finishing up, you know, 6, 630. So I don't know if we would like to risk even doing it a little bit later. But just, just throwing that out there. And then the, the, the final thing I wanted to ask you all as it relates to this particular issue is, is 
we're we're not non receptive to this still, right? No, we're not, not at okay, all. Okay, good, yeah. good. All right. It's about and saving it, lives. It wasn't us. You okay. Know, just right. to get that clear, it wasn't yes, us. They just uh, didn't have. They wasn't on the same page. Okay. And I, I like, think some I things like were sold out. Presented. And yeah. we still and we still like the concept of the conversation moving forward with the jail as well. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. I got to look. I'm and not, that's what she said. Not, I'm not 100 percent on that. I'll be yeah, honest with you. Just to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah we can have, have the conversation. conversation. After we need to have the conversation. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, I'm just not. I'm not 100 percent on that. Commissioner yeah. Wills. Commissioner Harris. Not, I'm not hold, I'm uh, no okay. holding feet to fire right now. But what are some of your concerns that you have right now as it relates to the Glaze County Jail being potentially utilized as a facility for us to send humans that are in jail? To me, it's the distance, and uh, they're going to have to drive back and forth every time. And you could get into a cost factor. Something happens, you got to rush right over to Glaze County. That's just one. Distance. What? What? Some of mine are. I'll be perfectly honest. After the conversation the other day, I was a little iffy about entering into that conversation. Partnering up. It just got so sideways. So well, so well it did, and 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 I didn't think the other side actually ponied up and did what they needed to do to yeah. put a, put an end to the conversation the way it was going. So I was a little I was a little you know dismayed about that. I also, you know, have reservations of the fact that if it's such a good thing, why are they in the shape they're in? Are the numbers actually going to be what they're presenting? Um, I'm just not 100% on that yet. Um, you're talking about the, the capacity of the facility, if it's this, if it's that. And I get all that, but I don't want to go on an if and put Henry County tax dollars into a situation in another county to where all of a sudden they say, well, we've changed our mind. Now you need to pay X amount more or you need to assume the total operation. That's just my reservation. Good point. If they were on us. Did they lose their ICE contract? So I think, I, I don't think they've lost their contract, but I think ICE in general is just down just on a nationwide, you know, basis. Okay. They're not, they're not, there's no deportation going on whatsoever right now. They had 425 ICE and now they have 90. So and it's the same boat. I mean, we could, yeah. we could be in the same boat. You remember when we went, we toured that during leadership. Were you there that day? I didn't go that day. It was a, it was a heck of a presentation, the, the way that thing got started. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I look forward to the conversation. I'm glad that we're all on board with having it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm not, not, not going to say I'm against it 100%. I'm just, like I said, just on the fence. So. Yes, sir. Well, the last item, I, uh, the last two items I wanted is uh, I'd love to know as quick as we can what the rollback potential is, what the rollback rate potential is, and then uh, 3% COLA. I want to make that a point of emphasis. I think that, I think that we're in enough financially good shape that that's something that needs to be you know given not visited but we need to do everything in our power to build that in miss davis and then um you know how well we fare obviously it looks like it's going to de depend on the governor's veto pen um uh, but i think that we've 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 fared pretty well thus far i think representative Mello and senator uh miss president uh pasadomo have done a great job or president-elect however you announce that but she's clearly a big dog uh I think that we need to start developing that list of what we want to ask for now. And uh, as for me, I think that uh, Henry County having an ADA compliant um, facility to be able to take people in during a, a natural disaster is is a paramount. And I think that a gen, do we have gen set? If we lose power right now, does a gen set come on for here? This, uh, no, only a portion of this. Only a portion. Yes. And I think that we need to be looking at we need to be looking at upgrading that, Miss Davis. And so. Um, you know, it was probably a year and a half, maybe two years ago, that, that we had that generator contract that we let. I'd love to know how that how we're sitting today. Um, usually I'm a little bit farther in front of that and asking that in February, March, uh, but April's almost over. But I would love to I would love to know where we're sitting at and if you can make that part of old business and bring it back to us with a finite update of these facilities are running, these facilities are running at XKW. You know, we've gone through, we know what's going on. I know that Commissioner Wills educated us to the fact that Years ago, we had a person, that's what they did. And, and we've been maybe a dozen years that we haven't had that. So let's try to get out in front of that and know where we're at. And then, you know, I think that we, you know, with all these CARES dollars, it's it's criminal to me if, if we and the school board can't get on the same page with making sure that Clouston Middle School or whichever building they deem is the most um, hardened. effective, you know, hardened at being able to deal with a storm, has uh, full capabilities. That a bike goes out and ATS fires up and, and they're, they're up and running. Yes, sir. Go to Glades now. 
Oh, they have to do that now because of special needs. We don't yeah. have a special needs shelter. We don't. We don't have a special needs shelter actually At from all. from uh, Wellington to Lehigh. There's not a special needs shelter. In West Glades. Glades. Falls, in Glades, Glades, West Glades, yeah. I can give you a, a quick update. Um, so Rick and Amy presented to me PowerPoint of findings. We had a committee. I think I sent you a while back, just letting you know what was going on. And there was a committee. That was in the sunshine generated, and it was made up of school board members and various other leaders, county staff, and they came up with a recommendation for a special needs shelter, possible locations, what that might look like. There were two or three recommendations um, with the pros and the cons, and that is going to be brought before you. There's an opportunity in June. Um, we think it's in June. It hasn't opened up yet for a 100% potential for a special needs shelter. They, d they had some data that you just talked about that there's very, very few um, special needs shelters. There is a deficit statewide, if you will, especially in the Heartland area for special needs shelters. Um, and that will be coming before you um, just to, to get your thoughts on it and, and really to get your go ahead and make sure that we're all on the same page. So when that June deadline comes out, we're, we're good to go. To Who's our, who's our representative? It used to be Freddie, now it's Firo, I think. If you can make sure that, that Commissioner Burroughs is on board with this, understands what we're trying to do, and we can make sure, you know, as, as the legislators come back around and celebrate the successes that they had, we can make sure that, you know, Senator Albright and Representative Tuck, you know, uh, even, even Oberdorf, who dips into St. Lucie and stuff like that, they need to know where we're at. Um, you know, Polsky has is, 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 is got a lot of juice and tally. And um, we need to make sure that everybody's on the same page with that. And um, and I think we all know, you know, there's some there's some other colleagues of ours that are that are moving on. They're doing everything in their power to move on to bigger and better seats. And we need we need to lean on them a little bit right now. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for my time. One, thing, one other thing on that EMS, uh, I get stopped three to four times a day on the bridge. The other day, EMS waited ten minutes to get across. If you had something bad wrong with you, you would have got. Thank you. They had, last year they had, according to Amy, 400 calls. Mr. Chair, to that point, when you're ready to pull the trigger on on uh, talking with Shane Parker on where Road and Bridge could could utilize a red iron building with a marl floor, and we're ready to stage something over there, I'm ready to pull the trigger. You know. Well, we have property. Yeah. I mean, so sooner rather than later, I believe we need to get something to stage over there. I don't disagree with you. I was actually sitting in traffic that day. And, I don't, and, I, and I'm not saying that to be no. disrespectful to but the to process. Or, yeah, I'm just saying but we've we been talking about it for two years. That's a big plan because you can't depend on, yes, on that. You have to be able to yeah. move forward. So, yes, ma'am. You know. yeah. And so if you're, if you're saying we got property, and, and Shane, you think this is something that, you know, you and the chair and Ms. Davis could visit about, and Jennifer, y'all, you know, you think that this is something. Because here's the fact. It's Florida. Covered parking space is never a bad thing. And so, you know, I, I just – you think about the right storm comes in and and you have to stage a debris removal contractor over there and you have that facility built. We're not using it, right? And we have that facility built and then we have the agreement that comes finalized with Glades County. Yeah, that's like gold. It, it'll pay for itself like that off of the rental process of what you'll get back from that contractor. Right. And a hurricane's going <clears> to <throat> hit us. It's fact. It's just a question of when. The property we have is 10 acres. It's off west side of County Road 78, south of, in between Kirby Thompson and... Uh, Hidden Hammock Road on the west side, um, it's wooded. There is a old spool pile drainage ditch that cuts through it. We would need to do some clearing. We got a, we got a culvert into it. We just need to do some clearing, and we'd have to do some gopher tortoise relocation because it's chock full of palmettas and stuff. Road and bridge boys would love that. And it's minimal. We can relocate them. That's easy, and we can clear it in no time. Right. I just leave um, gopher tortoises alone, man. Let them just chill. It's a fire truck. Send Tommy out for the turtles and then well, send the tractor out. If we have to, it would be him way, or yeah. Jorge would have to go out and run them. Tommy <laughs> is the quick. turtle king. Yes, he is. They, uh, Jim, so, I mean, it's easily done to clear it. Um, We're not we, going to clear all 10 eight, so. No, yeah. just, just a portion to where we could actually stage. And I, and I think uh, my personal opinion is I agree with that. I believe we should be moving forward on that, not waiting on something that's contingent on – Davis. Months and months and so, months. Here. I think it's a bad idea. So after that meeting, you know, I asked Stephen to provide a map of all our county property on the north side of the river the very next. 
tax deed property that's not going to work. So, so that's where we are. I also sent a follow-up email to South Florida Water Management because they do have several other properties that we were looking at way back. Um, just yesterday or the day before, I think it was, that I sent um, that email waiting to hear back and I'll follow up with them just to see if there's any opportunities for some of those properties um, in anticipation or if things don't work out with this agreement. Well, I say we move forward simultaneously. It's, uh, to me, it's a bifurcated effort at this point, and I go back to there's nothing like covered parking. And so, Shane, you, you just think about if, if we had some sort of a drainage issue or what was the last hurricane that whacked us? Irma, we had flooding on that side. They didn't open up the Caloosahatchee. So at Franklin from this way, we were flooding. You could walk across to the Caloosahatchee in downtown Fort Myers, right? You would have had equipment staged under, under a covered roof over there. Not during the storm, but I'm saying – at the end of the day, when they were demoving from, from the day's work, if they weren't leaving it right on site on work that they were performing, they would have it on that facility over there. It's a fair statement all day long. You could actually stage equipment there prior to the storm. You yes, put sir. Put a track hoe there, a loader there, a so, dump truck there. and you, you know, you're talking a little bit less than six figures to put up a, a, a red iron building. If you want to concrete the floor, that's one step up. But I'm saying just put them all down and let's, let's turn and burn. And then, and if EMS can't get in there, then we, then we look at you know, watch y'all build the road to get them in and out. Yeah, we need the fact yeah. is, if you put a red iron building there, you leave two bays open, you close one, now you have office facility and a place they can go. Then you have office facility for someone to stage there to bring in debris. They're not in a trailer there. Make it where you could get a deputy in So you there. want to do a drop and everything. You want to have, you know, do, do a power drop and everything. Well, I'm, these, I'm all about it. A lot of these trucks, a lot of their trucks do plug in. Yes, sir. So, now, the one I'm monitoring, I'm assuming that you probably wouldn't have to plug it in all day, but... If we're, you know, again, it's, it's going to be minimal the cost to go ahead and build out one portion of that. A selfish question to ask. Um, whenever, you give, whenever the administrator gives a go ahead and do it, but if we do go that route, can I just select one of my known environmental consultants that I use all the time that's good, get in there, get out, without having to go through the RFQ process, just kind of... Call him on the way home. Uh, yeah, let's speed it up. I'm just so, asking. Uh, it's I, We use... We use a gentleman from Johnson Engineering. John Kurtz does a lot of work for us, and I just assume pick him and have him go do the work. They're doing the work at the cemetery. Um, right there. There's a couple of them. I don't want to have to go through the RFQ process, what I'm asking. All right, Mr. Chair, Ms. Davis. Motion. Today, right now, today, right now, on the north side of the river, what facility does Hendry County own on any of our properties? What do, what do we, we have no? Okay, and what are we talking about? Ms. Davis, I ask you and Shane to handle this and give us a report back. Mr. Chair, you like it? I like it. Done? Do we need a motion? Do we need a motion? Yeah. I don't think I so. Do. That direction. Yeah. Direction. No. We did talk. Uh, and I'm and and I and I I'm not saying it's to weaken anything with the conversation. No. I think that that's still a great thing that we're trying to do over there, and I want to do it, but. We need something there regardless. Yep. If, if it goes through, we have that facility, that's great. If yep. it doesn't. Then we are in place. If we yes. lose a life by the time we get something finalized, we're going to be absolutely. Yes. Yep. Um, you're up, Shane. You, you can just answer from there. I don't care. I just want to know if you did you ever get anything back from the city on the lighting down down the Cowboy Way portion? Anything we can do to push that up? Do we need to call somebody from FPL and say, hey, you know, we've been helping you out a lot here. Get over here and fix it. Out to call Charlotte Miller. Yeah, reach out to Charlotte. She's been wanting them solar panels. And you want me to call her? Okay, so that, that's all we're waiting on is them to respond. Respond back to the city about how that's on Lillian. That's, you know, that's on Cowboy Way. For us, it's respond back with the cost that we're bringing back to the board and say, this would have been the cost to come pay for it and then do it and get it to you. I get it. I, I understand the cost and all that good stuff, but there's folks walking there. It's not going. The traffic's not going to get any less. So. Um, um, now the difficult question. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised Mr. Harris had nice this, and I'm going to reach over here and punch him on the leg. What would it take to get a sidewalk down one side of that road? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? That's where all that foot traffic's at. Yeah. You got a ditch on both sides, and I get it, but I mean, there's a lot of foot traffic there. Got a five year plan. Don't worry about it, Mr. Harris, gonna take care of it. 
But what you'd have to do, you'd have to pipe it, right? That's where the money's at. Well, I get it, but I mean, at what point do we say it's you know life safety compared to people putting people on the road to walk? Well, you have to dodge them every time you go down. I, I, and the, you know, the, not to be, you know, dramatic or anything, but I don't want us to be in the same situation the city's in, where they've had three people ran over, right in the middle of town because they've decreased the lighting there now. When you come through town, it's nowhere near as bright as it used to be, and right there in the same location, three different people have been hit. And yeah. I don't want us to be, you know, five years down. And I'm, I'm kind of kidding about it, but I'm not. I don't want us to be sitting here saying, you know, Shane, we was talking about this five. I may, I may not be here in five years. Who knows? But. The next person sitting here, sitting there, you know, we didn't get that sidewalk in. There's people been killed there, and I mean that's that's their loved ones. So it's just, again, not to be dramatic, but we really need to be moving on some of these projects like this. I believe or need to be pushed up this ladder a little bit. So that's all it is. We we and we will. We actually both of us need to call Charlotte, and start pushing. The more the more of us call her, the better. I mean, I think that's all I had. Anybody have anything else? Anything we would like to address the board tonight? Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.